Hey guys, it's Greg. I'm back. Now, it's winter where I live right now, and I stumbled into the perfect book for a snow day or a winter day, either one, last month when The Perfect Nanny became available at my local library. Um, this book first caught my eye when the New York Times included it in their top 10 books of 2018, but if its inclusion in that list gives you pause, let me assure you, it's not a dense read at all. Um, part of what made me interested about it is that it doesn't seem like the type of book the New York Times would typically choose for that list. One of the things I liked about this book is that it has some really intelligent things that it's saying kind of subtly. So if you want to go to that deeper level, you can. But if you're just looking for a psychological thriller, you can do that too. Either way, it works. Um, so it opens with a shocking crime where a nanny has violently murdered the children in her care. And the rest of the book moves back and forth in time to tell the story of the nanny and the couple that she works for. It's interesting that the book begins with the crime, but in a way it actually builds suspense because knowing what happens builds a sense of dread and unease as you work through the book, um, especially since as things start to fray and things fall apart and things get a little bit tense between the nanny and the couple she works for, you really start to feel like, ah, this is not going to end well. I do think this would be a great book for a binge read, which is why I said it would be great for a snow day. I did not have the time to do that. Things were really busy with work and the holidays, so I just couldn't dedicate the time. I wish I had had the opportunity to give it that experience because I think it would work for it. Uh, but I will say reading it over the course of two or three days worked just as well. So if you can't do the binge read, it's fine. I don't want to oversell this as a psychological thriller because it's not 100% intended to work in that. And if that's what you are expecting going in, you might be disappointed, uh, especially since you already know what's going to happen. The question is just getting there. And it's not really a big mystery about how you get there. It's just kind of watching it unravel. So don't go in with your expectations set for a, a, a really fast-paced mystery thriller kind of thing, and you'll be fine. For me, I really enjoyed the deeper level of this book as well. The husband is kind of a throwaway character. He's there, but he doesn't really do a whole lot. But I thought the mother character, Miriam, was really interesting. She's kind of caught in this position where she wants to have a career but she feels like she's expected to do a, be this mother figure that she's not really. Her husband expects her to be that figure, too. And there's a back and forth that I thought was really compelling with her. And as she gets back into the workforce and she really gets her career going, she has this guilt about having a nanny. But she also is proud of what she can accomplish. And I thought that was really well done. I also think the author, Leila Slomani, does a great job playing with the power dynamic between Louise, the nanny, and the couple that have hired her. Uh, Mary Mer and her husband have a sort of liberal guilt about having a nanny that makes them include her in the things that the family does a lot, but there's still this very kind of privileged, elitist attitude that constantly reinforces the boundary between them. Uh, in one part, they go on a vacation together, and the expectations that they have for Louise while they're on vacation there's a really stark contrast where she is part of the family, essentially. She's there every single day. She's raising the kids. She's cooking them dinner. She's helping them get through every everything in their day-to-day -day life. But she's not part of the family. She's treated like a lower-class person. It's kind of like the help, but in a much more upscale way. I think the character of Louise was also handled well. The one thing I'll say is that it never feels like you really get a handle on her. You only, you only scratch the surface. It feels like there's a lot more that you don't get to know about Louise. Um, she feels like she's suffering from PTSD, and like I said, it, it, you really do develop a sense of dread as the novel goes through, because you can see her unraveling and desperately trying to put this mask on so people don't know. And that's compelling. Um, I do wish I had gotten to know her a little bit better, but I think what Leila Slavani does works. All right, so to wrap this up, I really enjoyed the different levels of this book, the deeper one and the psychological thriller side. Um, I can see where if you're looking for something more on one side compared to the other, you would be a little bit disappointed, but I, I really enjoyed the interplay between both, and I think you might too. All right, I do have some recommendations to wrap this up if you're thinking that The Perfect Nanny might be for you, or if you're looking for something similar. The first one is much more on the literary side. Go with me, I promise. It kind of fits in. It's Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, it's definitely not a psychological thriller, but if you're looking for something literary, it does have that element of suspense. There's a lot going on. There's It's kind of mysterious. I can't say a lot about it without giving stuff away, but I would recommend that book anyway. But if you're interested in this one, it's a, it's a good follow-up. If you're looking for something a little bit more on the psychological thriller side, I'd say pick up some Patricia Heitsmith. She's very good. Um, or you could always go with something like Girl on the Train or Gone Girl. Those are good psychological thrillers. Um, so there you have it. That is The Perfect Nanny. If you've read it, 
and you have other recommendations or you have opinions, let me know. And I'll be back again. So, bye.